going on everybody sound like uh the guy from the simpsons that uh, isn't dr ned <laughs> um so yeah so maybe here answering any of your questions you have related to guitar or anything at all uh you talk about technique we could talk about um i know on this one we're talking about sweet picking so whoever there um whether you're advanced or beginners i'll try to help you out with any questions um Again, it doesn't have to be sweet picking or arpeggios. It can be anything uh, related to guitar technique wise. So fire away. Otherwise, I'm just going to break into um, some random soloing here. <laughs> hey, Jake. Yeah. Uh, Doug Lane says, in the immortal words of Reggie Phil Ami, my body is ready. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Doug. So am I. <laughs> um, Doug, yeah, if you have any questions, man, anybody that's. Uh, that is tuned in right now. Um, I am in uh, half step down, so that's gonna be A sharp. Um, and this is a seven string guitar, just like all the Witherfall kind of things. Um, so yeah, so if you're falling around, just tune your guitar down a half step if you want to play with me. So yeah, take that part down, Dave. Somebody, somebody says they were going through their Adam stuff that he signed, and they miss him, and we're all killing it. What's up, Jake Dreyer? Uh, is that a question? Yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> Who is this? Uh, well, cool. Happy to know that you yeah, knew Adam. Uh, how old were you when you started playing, and what are your influences, Mr. Dreyer? Uh, I started playing when I was eight years old, and I, it was because of this. Let's see if I can pull it off. <laughs> ACDC, that first riff right there was what I heard, and I was like, oh, I want to play guitar. Um, and, I mean, early influences were that, and it went into uh, some Guns N' Roses, like Slash, um, Metallica, um, then into, like, Megadeth, and it started being in the Marty Friedman territory. You know, all that good stuff. Um, and then Ingbe. Ingbe was a big one for me that made me actually want to play, like, real guitar like solos and really have to like practice all that kind of stuff um you know harmonic minor As, uh, evan bradley says hello oh evan what's up man we um yeah evan was the one who did this book here curse of autumn tablature book which is trying not get a glare there um, you can find it on our website. He's also doing a prelude to Sorrow for us, which will be coming out shortly. So you can get all those songs. Um, you know, the riff for like Moment of Silence. All perform the right way because Evan is a stickler for that. Just don't talk to Dream Theater about that with him. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get us demonized. <laughs> um, oh. So yeah, we have that uh, coming out, um, and it's got everything on there. It's got all the passages, you know, from uh, everything from a prelude to sorrow. So, and all done, we've meticulously did that stuff. The same thing that we did with Curse of Autumn. <laughs> Let's break that down. So that right there is, of course, from uh, As I Lie Awake off of Curse of Autumn. You can find it um, on our, in our tab book. So this is a G major 7 sharp 11 arpeggio. And 
And it works. Again, I do it over, actually. G yeah, we got do it again. Okay. One more time. Here we go. Very cool kind of sound. It's, it's, it's got kind of that Marty Friedman thing going on, too, if any of the players out there that like that. Um, it, it works very well over like a B minor chord too, which is just a B, D, F sharp. But when you put that over it, I hate to use the term exotic, but it kind of does have a, a little bit of a flair to that. Um, it's also the Hirajoshi scale, which is the Japanese pentatonic. <laughs> Same exact notes there. And then I do this thing too, which is actually, it looks kind of harder than it is. The sound. Let's see. That's a T2, T3 tapping, so. And that's basically just doing a G major seven arpeggio, starting on the 10th fret of the A string. And kind of the hard part there is getting that sort of tapping. And I, that's how I used to just practice it. I would just take that D, D, F sharp, D, A, B, A, and just basically ascend down. It's kind of a way that I also um, hack my way through in a major seven arpeggio. So I'll just take this shape of like a B minor in second inversion. But instead of doing that F sharp, I just put it up to a G, and it kind of is a hacky way of playing a, a major seven arpeggio, which sometimes can be a little bit difficult getting two notes on a string within the middle of it. So just do like the basically, still kind of sounds the same. So I'll try to like basically descend down whenever I'm doing that. All right, riffs. Uh, do you? I think he's asking if. I'm not sure if he's talking about the the verse because uh, he's saying E flat major seven over D minor. That's unless you're doing something in a solo there. I don't think so. During which uh, which song? In Ode to Despair. Ode to Despair during the solo section. Is that what he's asking? He's not. Maybe you can clarify there. Give me riffs because it in the verse it's not that at all. <laughs> See if I can get a better tone here. The gap drone. It's nothing. And then it goes to the. And then the nine. And that's kind of it. And the whole verse is that same thing. And the, then basically like the, the chorus. And then the, uh, and basically like the bridge or the solo section is. about the sweet picking in the solo section of what the oh tonality. oh yeah 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 <laughs> that section right there that's gonna be yeah so it's kind of cool so i do a d minor and root inversion and then this one right here is where's the e flat the e flat and the reason i like that one is it's almost like a g minor but I like adding that like flat six to it. Gives it kind of a different sound rather than just doing like a, and it, it just gives it a little bit more of a step movement because I, did, I didn't want to have that D just, you know? And then the diminished right here, which is over the A. And then it goes into the alternate or no, like basically economy picking. Not sorry, it'd be just like a tremolo pick section. Yeah. 
or you can do it that way. <laughs> Wherever you're at on stage, and if Joseph's not trying to kick you, <laughs> it depends on that. Um, hopefully that answered your question. If not, shoot it again. And uh, are, you, are we coming to the East Coast, Philly or Delaware? I think we are. Yeah, I think we are. We'll be on there. We'll be somewhere around. I know we start off on the East Coast. I think we start in New York and we yeah. end in Boston. So big giant loop around. We got uh, at Everton. Uh, oh, Everton. With, at the Winterfall Brazilian fan page. Greetings, my great friend, Jake. This is a book, so I'm going to read all of this here. Okay. <laughs> uh, about, oh, hey, Ricardo. Cheers from Lima. Um, Everton has five questions to ask. All right. Let's five questions. Okay. First, what was your first guitar and do you still have it? Oh, I, my first guitar. No, unfortunately I don't have it. Um, I had, I had kind of a few that I started out with. I had like an uh, acoustic guitar. I think it was like a, I don't even remember the brand, but it was something that I first started with. And I started playing acoustic. That's how, well, my guitar teacher at the time, Steve Cox, who died, but like a lot of my guitar teachers have, um, he had me play like I started on acoustic, which helped a lot. I mean, it was, it sucked at first because you have to develop your hand strength. Um, I don't remember what guitar that was. And then I went into, uh, I got a Gibson SG because I was a huge Angus Young fan. And it was, I wish I had it. It was like a faded, and a moonbeam on the fretboards. Um, and that was around 2003, I think. Um, so I'll call that my first my first guitar. So it was a Gibson SG faded with the moonbeam fretboard, fret inlays. And if anyone ever sees that, send me over a link because I want to buy one again. Um, I really regret selling that. Don't ever sell your guitars. Let's see here. Second question. What what bands have influenced your life? Not just your music, your life. My life? <laughs> for for better or for worse. Um geez. Elaborate. <laughs> kiss, kiss for sure. Um when I was a kid, that was all I wanted to do was be in a band because of KISS. A C D C Guns N' Roses, Metallica um dream theater uh nevermore um i mean guys like aldi miola paco de lucia aldi miola here we'll give something like that here's a quick one for you guys out there that really want to play fast it's super easy too that's how you play like aldi miola then. Really cool because it just it lines up, especially when you're alternate picking. If Joseph, you want to go to the uh, yeah. shot of the fretboard there. Um, so it's just it's six notes, and I start with a down, up, down, and then up, down, up. So that's the line. time up to speed you can also take that down too and with that one i actually like to start on upstroke because check this out you start with one and then right here you can double it up with a down and then but i recommend practicing both ways start with it up all right. Anyways, going back to your question there, Everton. <laughs> um, Aldi Miola was a big, uh, big influence, and in, uh, really for like getting into like the Spanish kind of classical guitarist type stuff. Um, but yeah, for better or for worse, I guess like Guns N' Roses and the Rolling Stones and Aerosmith, those guys seem to have a good time. That's why you have a drinking problem, right? Uh, <laughs> number three, and all the shows that Woodfall has done, which show has marked your in your memory and why <laughs> <laughs> no it's not a good one mexico was 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 rough man that was it, it, why was it rough you can sure there's a video online and we won't rehash it but for a good performance i think prog power was fun 
Uh, we just did Prague Power. That was cool. Uh, the shows in Tokyo that we did with Camelot because playing in Japan was awesome. If anybody's in there from Japan, looking forward to coming back to your country. Mm -hmm. um, those were fun. Uh, 70,000 Tons of Metal, which was our first show ever, where we uh, had the Sagan Brothers come out. Um, yeah, those those were all good. But Mexico, I, I don't ever need to be reminded of that ever again in my life. Jesus. Um, okay. Let's see here. Number four from Everton. Okay. In which place or which country or in which festival would you love to play with your band Witherfall? Brazil. Look, sounds like you're down there promoting yeah. the hell out of this band. So yeah. thank you for that, Everton. And uh, he's going to bring definitely... all, of, all, of <laughs> yeah. the, all of the Brazilian models will be at the show. I want I want that place to be packed out like the stadium. So yeah, great job on uh, on on promoting us down there. So yeah, Brazil for sure. I can tell by our Spotify numbers that Joseph shows me that we're we're, we're uh, kicking some ass down there. So thanks to you. Let's see. Plus, the Latin American audiences are absolutely insane. So, love the energy. Okay. Finally, from Everton, which do you prefer to drink? Witherfall Vintage Wine or Shadows Beer? <laughs> wine, for me, all the time. I haven't even tasted the Shadows Beer yet. I wouldn't know, man. I'm not a, I'm not a beer drinker, but I, I consume enough wine to kill a small village. Yeah. Yeah, we're both actually a little hungover. Uh and you can order the wine right here on this link, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's right here. Shout as well. out to there we go. Charlie we still have Echo. yeah, Charlie and Echo. Great one. Um, let's see. All right. Random Facebook user. How many guitars do you own? And what are your favorites? Ooh, I good question. Um, how many guitars do I own? I, I don't know, man. There's there's a lot, probably. I mean, I'm not like a serious collector, like some of the guys that have hundreds of guitars, but I probably have about, I think, the upward teens. Um, some of the guitars that I really love, I love this one the most. This is my purple, purple Jackson, the purple monster, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one's been around for, for a long time. I think it's been on every Witherfall record. And um, this one's really cool. I love the Ibanez uh, UV77GR, which is the Steve Vai Universe. It's a green one. Let's probably see that. Um, I use that one on a lot of a lot of the solos on Witherfall. Um, that's a great one, 91. This this Taylor right here is really cool too. This is probably my newest uh, collection here. Uh, it's a nylon string. So you'll hear that in the new record that Joseph and I are working on right now. Um, I have a, a, I, I have a, oh, I have a brand new RR1. Um, there's a video we just did unboxing that, which is really cool. RR7, I guess. It's the Randy Rhodes with mm. the seven string. I haven't seen too many of those. So it's the Black Ghost Flame, which I've always thought was a cool, very cool finish. Um, that one actually sounds incredible, too. So the rhythms on that are, are awesome. That's what we've been kind of doing for a lot of our demos. Um, there's a lot, man. I love Gibsons, too. I have a, a huge collection of Gibsons. I have the uh, EDS-1 one two seven five I, I believe that's the name of it it's this uh double neck um which is in our videos um but yeah that's that that's a great guitar super iconic looking just looks cool are you friends with brandon ellis <laughs> oh with brandon um you know it's funny brandon and i did our first tour together um it was when I was with White Wizard, he was with Arsis, and we were opening up for Firewind in 2011, I believe that was. It was called the Frets of Fury Tour. Um, and yeah, we, we would hang out quite a bit on, on that run. I haven't talked to him that much recently, but he's he's the fucking insane guitar player, killer guitar player. Um, we've he, He's been over to my place when I was in Hollywood a few times. Um, yeah, great, great guitar player. I think he, uh, he came out couple times too on uh when i was with we were opening up for kiss and and def leopard i think that was maybe the last of my song but yeah phenomenal guitar player all right let's see someone some random facebook user will be traveling to new york city from central new york to see us play i wonder who that is nice very cool first show to tour yeah try to get past the metal detergent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Colin Crumpton writes, 
what would you say is the most difficult solo for you to perform live and love the end of time solo by the way oh uh well thank you um most difficult <laughs> weatherfall solo perform live um in the time is pretty tough man especially the intro um uh the full version i would say uh what's currently on our set that's pretty difficult is uh nobody sleeps here is one that i i have to definitely woodshed uh before playing um especially like there's some parts that really like when you're trying to lock it with the band <laughs> To get that part right nailing that with the band is really tough because that's not it's the timing is completely all over the place so i'm playing it with anthony and chris it's it's a little bit difficult and it's got these run too it's another one that's a really good example of like basically putting six together that kind of stuff that's uh that's difficult i mean man it, none of this stuff's easy <laughs> so um uh portrait is kind of a bitch to start out with we always start our songs out with that and i wish we didn't because it's that's a hard one to get you know especially when you're trying to get like the sound right on stage and and get used to the crowd and everything um i'm gonna go with that you know there's a lot of songs off nocturnes that were pretty difficult we're gonna have to do a book for that one too because that some of that stuff's pretty pretty wild um uh, I, I think, um, I mean, you know, some of the stuff like that, that's a little bit more feel like, like vintage is, is not too bad. Um, you can kind of like float over that a little bit, but the stuff where it's very strict and especially the stuff that has to be locked in with the band is, is quite challenging. All right. Hi from Brazil, from Marcelo. Um, Marcelo. Thanks, man. And uh, another Facebook user asked, how was opening for Kiss? Oh, awesome. Yeah, that was like summer camp, man. It was wild because it's like, well, Kiss was one of my favorite bands. I've seen Kiss maybe twice before I, I actually went on that tour. And so, um, yeah, it was, I mean, you know, you got to play and then you got to watch Kiss and Def Leppard every night. So who wouldn't want to do that at these, you know, amphitheaters and stuff? It was fantastic. Awesome time. All right. And uh, Mia says... Cat emoji, Ukraine flag, Tokyo. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Mia. Yeah, Mia, if you want to ask a question, I sent you a link so you can come on and ask your question in person. Click the link in your email. So that right there, like that part of portrait is very hard to get live and it's right at the gate. portrait there yeah uh very thanks uh everton we're gonna have to have everton come on uh one of these chats and talk about the scene over there in brazil yeah absolutely man um, everton would you be able to do that uh just hit me up on the email and uh everton asked if you will do the solo for lascar for him to post on the brazilian page oh i can teach it <laughs> Kind of there. <laughs> I'll take you a quick, Everton. Uh, 
Mia, once again, with the angry pussy and the Ukrainian ah! flag, uh, says, what is your favorite food? Sushi, Mia. <laughs> I suspect Love. that cat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough one too. Last scar. Eric Musco, greetings from Connecticut, Jake. Curious what effects you use. Your tone sounds incredible. I don't think you should answer that. <laughs> this one, <laughs> you only want to know what's going through right here because there are zero effects. It's, this all, is, it's all in the hands, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, seriously. I mean, this is. I mean, this is a micro cube that I'm using right now. That's mic'd up. That's it. I mean, yeah. it, it's full on, and that's. And when I practice too, I practice just. I don't know if you can even hear that, but it's dry, you know? You, yeah, it's just a lot of it comes down into your in your hands, man. I could play really anything and it's going to sound hopefully a little bit like me, but it's all about just really the vibrato is, is a lot of it. That's where a lot of the tone comes from. And um, for anybody out there who wants to learn vibrato, practice this. Just trying to match the pitches and the rhythm together and then you know listen to a lot of your favorite players too and um try to mimic what they're what they're kind of doing and and really listen to the different pitches but that's where a lot of the tone comes from man because there's nothing on here i mean right there's no, no. we don't have anything going yeah so my, it's, it's a practice amp right now yeah i mean there might be a little compression coming through the board but that's about it um, i mean if you're asking for like for on the record it's it's pretty it's a lot there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there, there's there's like, but really it's just, you know, delays and, and reverb, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing real crazy. Um, I, I do love to use the uh, Saldano SLO 100. That's yeah. my, that's where all the tone. Um, I mean, we do a lot like. of stuff like, like we, we did some stuff, stuff with like Leslie's and some weird pedals, but those are just for effect. The main guitar sounds are pretty straightforward. Let's see here. Colin says portrait doesn't look easy. I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. And Mia is drunk because now she's saying hi from Germany. My name is Mia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no portrait. Portrait's got some some moments in there. Um, Greetings from Brazil. Uh, again, another fan in Brazil. <laughs> Uh, give me riffs says there's a vibrato lick in seven headed whore by an unnamed band uh can you play it for us oh man i haven't uh, is it that i'm gonna guess it's kind of like that it's that That's kind of a lick that I really like to use a lot, and it's just. So it kind of does that falling down the stairs thing, which is an effect that I, I really love a lot, and then he's going to build up. I'm guessing that's it. Can I do that again? Let me get my tone. I'm gonna guess that's the one. It's been a while. Or it says uh -oh. something like that too. I, I to, it's been a while since I've listened to that we song. Have a, we have a guest for a second here. Mia. Hello. Oh, there's Mia, our Japanese liaison. <laughs> What questions do you have for us, Mia? Uh, it's coming through. All right, Mia. Well, <laughs> having some technical difficulties there. I think that's the look that you're talking about, man. Um, you can kind of do that anywhere, too. Or it's the one that's like... And I... Something like that. It's been a while, man, since I've uh, played any of the Eister stuff. You can say Eister. Come on. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it, man. I'd have to like go back and, and listen back to what I did there. Um, but it's a combination of that. There's force. Uh, yeah, I don't know why we couldn't hear. Um, okay, let's see here. Dave says, what's the thickness you're using for your guitar picks? 1.14. That is what these are. Um, is there a, let me see, there we go. Right there. 1.14, and I use like the jazz, the, the jazz shape. Um, but not with the nylon. Uh, it's not the nylon uh, texture to them. I, I prefer these. I think this sounds a little bit better. What? Show us how you actually hold the pick, because you hold it different than some other. I hold it. Players. Yeah, I hold it kind of like. Uh, let's yeah. see. Like it's kind of on the edge of my finger, if you can kind of see it. Mm -hmm. And then when I put it, it does this. And then, um, and when I play, actually, it's like I'll go up like a little bit for for like sweeping type stuff. I'm gonna do like an arpeggio lick, like a. Um, it kind of goes even back. Like there it is. I haven't touched it at all. I don't know if you can see that. If it's, it's like very resting on the edge, and that's what I do for arpeggios. <laughs> Greetings from Mexico. Cheers, man. What? Man, I can't pronounce that. Um, Colin says, question for Joseph and Jake. Favorite Witherfall riff at the moment? And I'm sure it changes daily as it does for me. Jake, you go first. Favorite Witherfall riff um, at the moment? <laughs> I think I already played the one from... Um, as a lie wake is is pretty cool. Um, I think that that one. Um, let's see. Other side of fear. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, those are some of my favorites. Um, those are all the new records. So, well, the newish record, the one that came out in 2020. Um, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a new song. There's a riff in one of the new songs that is turning out to be my favorite. Uh, I don't want to give away song titles, but it's it's probably the heaviest thing that we've ever done. Yeah, that's what we're here out right now doing. Um, it's really good. Um, here. Doug Lane, we first met at a show in FWB at the Downtown Brew. Oh my God, for Walton Beach. Yeah. Dead Ringers Guild. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Following your story is a huge reason why I wanted to attend Emma. I don't answer that. Uh, got any cool stories from your time there? At MI, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, MI kicked my ass, man, because I went there expecting that I could just do all the, you know, metal guitar type stuff. And then I had to, with the high, the hard dose reality that metal is not everything. So, I had to go back and learn a lot of like the jazz stuff, some standards. Um, and a lot of that was, was like, a, you know, it's kind of like the overload that they would give you um, in the program I was in, I was in a bachelor program and um, they would, it, it, it was relentless. I remember doing like um, the LPWs and like completely spacing out that I had to do learn a song and then going there and, getting laughed at by your uh, the teachers there because they're like you're an idiot and like, you can't even play this stuff so yeah it was it was a um, musical character building but opened my eyes up to a lot of different different music out there 
um, different ways to approach uh, scales and and you know rhythm guitar. Um, and then the theory was really great too. I love the theory, reading music, that that kind of stuff, actual notation. Mm -hmm. uh, it says play that guitar more <laughs> harder. <laughs> Uh, that's another good riff right there, Sacrifice. Uh, it's been a while, man. <laughs> the, uh, our friend, uh, Alice Cooper. Oh, we got Alice Cooper? <laughs> cool, man. Alice Cooper's down there. If Knuckle Bones made a Jake Dreyer icon statue, what guitar would it have and what would it be wearing? <laughs> it would be this guitar and... Show the boots. Uh, you can't see the boots, yeah. These boots. Cal uh, there we go. The Yngwie. <laughs> And um, in no pants, no pants, no pants. Oh God, no, that the pants would be optional. They'd be like, yeah, a, a, yeah you, you can put them on or off. You yeah. know, Van the Impaler says hello. He's got some weird oh, seasons. What's yeah. going on, man? How are you doing, man? Uh, Thanks for coming out of the show in in Atlanta, man. That was very cool. And for posting some of those videos online. Some uh, some odd blonde girl asks. <laughs> can you imagine you're working on a new record? When will it be out, and what are your influences for the next one? <laughs> um, she asked when the record did yeah, come out. Yeah, Diera. It's a strange. Oh spell yeah, name. yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> well, we can't really say when the record's coming out. I mean, it's a secret. Yeah. Um, we'll be recording it soon. Yeah, it'll be recorded by uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Yeah. So we're we're deep into the writing process right now, but uh, an actual release date will be next year. To TBA, watch out for. Uh, I have a feeling this girl knows a little bit about press releases, so <laughs> she should know that we can't say anything until our press release is yeah. out. I mean, look at her avatar; like it's like a professional headshot. <laughs> we actually have professionals on this yeah. page. Uh, Sven the Impaler asks an annoying question: Do you remember any of your old Cobra solo? <laughs> No, I, I, I really don't, man. Um, it's been a while since I've listened back to any of that stuff. Um, yeah, I really... No, I, I, I don't remember, man. Sorry. <laughs> I barely remember any of the Witherfall solos. Yeah. He also says 1.14 1. millimeter is Angel Hair Pasta. I did not know that. Well, so, well, you know, if we run out of picks, we'll use Angel Hair. I want someone to to make me a pick out of Angel Hair Pasta. Oh Jesus. Oh Lord. So you can eat it when you're wasted. All right. John Salomon. How do you get that sick ass tone? It's so crisp. I'm sorry <laughs> if this has been answered. Uh yeah, man. I mean it, it comes down to the fingers. It just comes down also when I was a I mean I could play kind of through anything. It's going to have a little bit of a sound. Again, this, what we're using right now is just a, it's a rolling micro cube, yeah. which is solid state, you know, and uh, we're not, we're not doing any weird stuff with it um, effects wise. So it's, it's vibrato, man. Again, like um, just really also kind of knowing like it, just through playing and recording yourself. Like when I was really like in high school, I used to record myself every night with like a little tape recorder. And I go back and listen to it and be like, damn, why does that not sound like my favorite, my favorite players? And, and that really helped. Um, Cause when you're actually playing it, it's a little bit difficult to, to go in and, and really be critical on yourself. So um, I would do that. And then again, like you just know, like the difference between, um, you know, how to pick, you know, like what velocity you want to hit the actual note with, and that's going to completely make it better. So when people ever ask about tone, it's not really the gear it's, it's, you know your your hands and your 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 playing ability so um but but thanks for the compliment man i mean um again we we, we kind of answered it earlier that live uh like live is a kemper and then 
when I'm recording, I'd never use a Kemper or any of that stuff. It's full on uh, Saldano SLO 100 for uh, the lead tones. Facebook user, I like this lick you do sometimes where you start with the trem picking up high. It's in a few with a false songs and maybe great meat in army and human empire. Oh, yeah. Something like that. I can't get yeah. Oh, yeah, it goes down. Uh, yeah, it's just like a... Something like that, I think, is, is kind of, and it's slow. And then I always kind of end it with something that doesn't run like that. I think one in Tempest, too, um, the end of like, yeah. So that's just. It's just kind of a combination of that series of fours that you're just going down. So if you got that, like the Inge kind of thing. Or, and just add some like a like a, like a trim line. If I can get that part better. I think that's it, man. That that like for I think that's the one you're referring to. And what's your favorite hair metal riff? <sighs> hair metal riff. Let me see. Ah, uh, let me think here. I might say that's Ozzy, which but is a hair metal era of Ozzy. Okay, Mia, Mia, I'm sorry, Mia, we couldn't get you on. Um, which is your favorite city to tour in Germany? Germany, Dusseldorf. <laughs> that one's for yeah. Mia. Uh, no, Germany is awesome all over the place. Um, uh, there's really cool venues like the one in uh, uh, I think Mark Halla or yeah, that's in. Uh, oh man, um, <laughs> Hamburg. Hamburg yeah. was great. Uh, had great shows in in Berlin. I've had great shows in like Osnabrück, and then yeah, all over Germany is incredible. There's not really like one of my favorites. Just the German audience, and they like Witherfall, so I like them. <laughs> Dusseldorf's a killer city though too. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you said you like Kiss. What's your favorite Kiss song? And Man, I wish someone was listening right now. We could fuck with them so much. <laughs> Black Diamond. I don't even know if I'm really playing that right. We were just listening to a lot of Kiss the other day. What's the... All Kiss. Early Kiss. I mean, I love all... Versions of Kiss. They were like my favorite band when I was a kid. Let's see, you. give me riffs again, sir. Thank you for all your wonderful questions. Have you heard the band Eternity's End? Superb shredding and siren. Yeah, Christian from Obscura. That's his band. Yeah, great stuff. Very cool, like neoclassical, like cacophony. Yeah, that, that stuff's awesome, man. Adam Domchowski. Greetings from Poland. Boring question. How do you maintain unused strings muted while sweeping, especially when you're using the right hand for tapping? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So um, this is, so yeah, we're going to take just like a simple, like um, the root position arpeggio. So it's A minor. And then, so what I'll do is I'll like, I'll take the whole shape. And you just really want to practice it super slow. And what I'll do is I'll just take a little part of it, like I'll 
practice with it very muted like that. And then slowly like just put the tempo up. And this kind of goes back to the question about tone. It's all about the control. So if I want it really muted, or I want it, it's all kind of really, it's just about having the control of, of the your your palm. And, and that this comes from doing it really slow, which is, you know, it's always a tough one because people want to play fast, but you got to start out very slow. So I would just take that. And it's down, 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 up. And maybe, you know, finish the whole entire arpeggio. And so I'll even take it at that. One, two, four. It's just going to be four notes. And for the actual tapping on there, like that, we'll take that G major seven arpeggio. If I'm doing it, you can actually kind of see my palm, like my palm kind of shoot up the fretboard to get those strings. So right there, at least I'm kind of seeing it from this angle and watching, I'm actually watching myself now on this <laughs> see, <laughs> but it looks like it, it looks like I kind of just I, I go up so I, I'm slowly and I do this slow so you get both of the hands in sync but that's one of the ways that I do to, to grab those strings and it's, it's really just a matter of just really um, noticing the the palm muting and practicing it very slow and then messing around with it too like say you want to do something that's like very muted <laughs> Or is something open? It's enough yeah. to drive someone insane listening to that. <laughs> and you gotta do it over and over again. Uh, Adam, and again, it sucks you're not touring with Evergrey in Europe. I was really hyped for the show in my hometown. Yeah, we were too. Yeah, we were definitely looking forward to that run. That was gonna be a killer run. Cool, cool list of bands on there, man. But but we'll be back. Um, it's COVID, man. What, what do you mean? Yeah, it was. Took out two years there. Are we playing in Chicago? That's uh, uh I, I I don't know. <laughs> must be that Moonspell tour in Chicago. I I hope so. Chicago, Chicago is awesome. I think I've had every show I played in Chicago has been a really great time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like Michael Shanker, or Daniel Andrade? Hell yeah, man! Awesome, awesome guitar player. Very melodic. A lot of the vibrato stuff, and actually a lot of like that sound that I kind of get, that like cocked wah sound. <laughs> Comes a lot from Michael Shanker. That's um. And, and if I had it, and sometimes actually on the record, we'll use the cock wall for that sound, and that's directly influenced by Michael Schenker. Fantastic melodic guitar player. Dave, very good. Do you sometimes use a whammy bar? Um, Very, 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 very rarely. Um, I've never really gotten into that stuff. It's cool, but um, also it's just a pan in the ass to set up. Do you know who uh, Stefan Forte is? Uh, yeah, I, I yeah I know that name. Yeah, he says he likes the way he uses. The yeah, he does it. Yeah, a lot of those guys use it for like really cool stuff. I like the for those out there that were like that are. I mean, this is Michael Lee Ferkins. He played a lot on. Uh, uh, he's a shrapnel guy. He would use his bar as like his his actual vibrato, mm -hmm. uh, which Becker would use a lot too. But you know, to me, it has a different sound. I like the full on mask. <laughs> Look again on that dude. It's like it. Mia says she has one more question. Okay, Mia. Yeah. Do you have any favorite favorite Japanese bands or guitarists? And do you like that's two questions. Do you like Japanese food? <laughs> Japanese food is my favorite. Um uh Japanese bands, loudness. Hell yeah. Loudness, and then uh actually there's a band. What's that one that's uh Ga Gallon? 
Oh, uh, Galnarius. Galnarius, yeah, they're, they're they're pretty cool. Yeah, they were really nice guys. Uh, I hung out with them after uh, or before the Sanctuary show last time at Prague. Yeah, that's right. They played Prague. Yeah, before we yeah, a few years ago. They were, um, they were cool. Great guitar player that guy is. Let's see here, Soul Butcher. Oh man, aren't you in fucking Europe or something right now, man? Uh, you guys will be near Chicago in Joliet. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're playing the Forge, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which used to be that used to be called a place. Is Holy that that shit. place we played in that other band we were in a long time ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot oh. what the hell the name of that place was. Um yeah. In Joliet, yeah. It was right next to like a casino, I remember it was right, all right. Yeah, uh yeah, shit. That was a strange show. <laughs> Um, if anybody knows the name of that, just put it on there because it's going to drive me insane. Yeah. Oh, I God, it sounds like it was like a dog's name, like Cujo's or something. But uh, it's not Mojo's. That's yep. it. Mojo's. Cujo, Cujo. Mojo. Cujo. I knew it was something. Yeah. Other questions. She says, "Do you like Michael Amat as a yeah. person?" I've never met Michael Amat ever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever I've ever met him, but I like his I like his band. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a cool band to tour with. I would definitely like. And then uh, and Loomis. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Colin, do you guys enjoy Symphony X? I love Michael Romeo's playing. Him and Jake look make shredding look easy and effortless. My, I, I love Michael. I love Symphony X, and I love Michael Romeo's playing. Like he's actually he does a lot more of the tapping, kind of like arpeggio stuff, and he's got that down. And I mean, and he he's got a lot of classical influence, which I think is very very cool. Um, and actually, there was there was a, one of those. Kind of like a, he'll kind of do that stuff a lot too. I've heard it a few times where he'll do the, like the tremolo stuff, and, and maybe subconsciously I would have gotten it from him or. Or one of those players but yeah symphony x really rules man the soul butcher just got back from france yeah i saw you at hellfest in, yeah hellfest uh you were hanging out with zane i think at least from what i saw online <laughs> stream jake uh we'll leave it open for five more minutes for any more questions and uh if there's anything you want to show them like yeah i mean if there's any um let's see here um let's see here so yeah i mean any more questions regarding you know speed picking here um from uh, the ending of Vintage here. So slow, it's actually like a really kind of basic um, pattern. Again, it's just starting on the upstroke. I'll do it even slower. And then go into a D. And then C. And back to D. And that's kind of something too that you would see like Jason Becker would do that a lot, especially during that uh I can't remember the any of that part, but that's kind of something where I got that idea from is just grabbing those last those notes. <laughs> Some more uh, arpeggio Jason, madness there. Jason Becker didn't shy away from arpeggiating major chords. 
Yeah, man. <laughs> Love it. Let's see here. Doug Lane. I first heard of Galnerius and an old young guitar issue. Oh, yeah, young so, guitar. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you studied those two. Did you ever get to meet Yanni Limitanen from Sonata Art? Uh, we tour with Sonata, yeah, but, uh, but I, I don't think it was that guy, though. No. It was the other guy. No, I haven't met him yet. Uh, but yeah, I definitely studied the hell out of all those young guitar magazines. They were great. I was actually in one of them, I think, uh, when we did. Yeah, no, we're, you're in a few. Yeah, of a few of them, yeah. Um, I love that magazine, man. It's no, cool. We, it's we still a lot of fun. Still back. Um, for calling your trajectory in Demons and Wizards. Which yeah. sound, which song, sound or song did you find the heaviest to play live? The heaviest? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, Gunslinger was was pretty, or that uh, Gunslinger or uh, or Crimson King, I think were were the heaviest. Yeah. And they, you know, they got that that Schaefer. <laughs> When we were doing, uh, like, for example, you know, when we were doing that with, with Schaefer, that he was a, I'm not going to use that term, yeah, <laughs> he was... He was very strict uh, on 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 making sure that shit was super super tight. So, and we quadded that shit, and that was it's four of those guitars getting just. And if you like, just just at home, for example, practicing that, just like, and then quad it all up, and make sure they're all together, and, and you'll find it's it's very difficult, very underrated like like form of of trying to get perfection going Especially on. Especially at that speed. Yeah, uh, an echo. Uh, it's got a lot of names. Uh, Dreyer is a fan of Ingve Momstein and Annie of the Rock. I think that's a correct statement. That's uh, a very correct statement there. <laughs> I absolutely love those guys, man. Yeah, I grew up with all that stuff. I still listen to those guys to this day. Yeah, I mean, I, anyone that doesn't like Annie of the Rock has issues, I think. Annie of the Rock stuff so cool because it's very melodic, too, yeah. which is you can sing that stuff. See and the Colin, no more questions. Keep up the good work. Looking forward to what's next. Thanks a lot, man. Mia says, how many hours a day do you play guitar? I, I think it'd probably be easier to answer how many hours a day he's not playing guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I'm sleeping for four hours a night. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, John, uh, that playing is embarrassing. I'm out now. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, and, man. Yeah. Favorite song from Awake? That's a good question. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> oh, The Mirror. For sure. Really? Yeah, I love that. Or Scarred. Yeah, the Scarred's my Yeah, favorite. Scarred's. Yeah. That, that record's awesome. One of the best, like, seven-string sounds, too, man. Yeah. Like, Patricia's playing on that is, is fantastic. Yeah, we are actually talking to the engineer. What's that stuff that Patricia kind of did? That was, like, one of the ideas I got a lot from her. Yeah. He does that all the time with it when it was with Kevin Moore, too. Uh, like some, uh, very, they would very go cool. up, like, Four oh yeah. <laughs> but then all yeah. doubled and shit. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah, miss Kevin Moore, man. Jesus. Uh, all right, Rusty Schneider asks Becker, Friedman, or Gilbert, who are you taking in a shred war? <laughs> God damn, dude. What? That's a tough one. That's very tough, man. I mean, uh, I mean. What, what what battle are we going into? Are we going to alternate picking, sweeping, or or melodic control? <laughs> all out war. All, all, all out war. Uh, Becker, I think Becker Ooh. is is the one. I mean, I love the I love all those guys, man. I love them. you know for for alternate picking, it's gonna be it's gonna be Paul Gilbert. Sweeping is 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 Becker, and then for I mean, I the guy who I listen to the most of is probably Marty Friedman, though. Like I love his his solo records. Um, Dragons kid. Yeah, Dragon's Kiss, man, and then all that kind of stuff bending it up, you know. So. All 
all great stuff, man. I, I practice those guys all the time. So that, that's a tough one. I think any any battle with those guys, you're set. Love the debut, Demons and Wizards, magical songwriting. Uh, I like the turtle song. You like uh, the Gunslinger? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Let's see here. Eric, Jake, you touched on a bit before, but I'm curious how much time you focus on picking technique for tone, speed, accuracy. Do you study guys like Sean Lane? Oh, Sean Lane. Yeah, I, I did for a while. His stuff's like very legato, though. You know, he's taking that. It's going to be a bad. I don't really know how to play like Sean, but you know, he's taking some of those like uh, one string. The guy had master hands, too. And do that and that was a lot of legato um but yeah I, I i definitely studied a lot of sean um when i was in high school um but so what was the question again like regarding uh just how much time on oh, just okay. pure technique yeah it, it's i mean all the time man it's just doing this stuff like we were talking about becker like taking or taking something that's even better would be like With uh, picking, I, I really try to focus a lot on not just picking with it, starting with a downstroke or an upstroke. I, I do it with everything. So if you're taking like a line, like we'll just do like uh, low Korean. Do you want to just go to uh, that shot of the fretboard there? This is one of the best examples. So if I'm doing like a low Korean type uh, shape. I'll take that starting on a downstroke, down, up, down, and then I'll also just start with an upstroke. So you have both, uh, you can choose from both of them. And I'll do that with all my picking. So let's even take that last shape. All that stuff, start it with a downstroke, and then also start every single exercise you're doing with an upstroke. Eric uh, Pinzon says, you could easily play along Andy Rock and King Diamond. Your conversations remind me of that style. Awesome, man. Yeah, that'd be, that would be cool. Very, very cool, man. I love I love Andy Rock. I love King Diamond. Who doesn't, man? Awesome band. Yeah, it's a great exercise right there. Can you play some King Diamond? I, you don't mention in darkness. Oh, no, I realize it's been a long time. Something like that, I think. What's that one we... There's one, uh, I think it's off of off that record um invisible guest there's oh, yeah. that one lead right there that... <laughs> oh, something like that I, I can't remember i used to know it uh then and in the rock on death individual thought patterns grew hair on my chest. oh yeah that's yeah yeah he played on that man that was great and his I uh i didn't even know that yeah he did he did a uh cool solo on uh at the gate song yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was like a whole like, couple like, years ago or something, song. right? Uh, no, like their first record, I think, or one of the early ones. How many guitar styles were used in what we are dying for? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Uh, yeah, it's got the you know the acoustic stuff going on. <laughs> Something like that. And it's got the, uh, yeah, there's every single one, especially there for that flamenco thing. That one's cool. We're going to bring a lot of that stuff back on the new record, too. So yeah. I know some people have been asking for that. Um, so that, that will be shown on this new upcoming record. John Solomon, do you have to keep playing every day, all day to maintain dexterity and speed? Do you feel like if you skip days, uh, you would start to fall back? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do. But there's also something about like, especially if there's a part that's just killing you, mm -hmm. 
you got to take it like it, it, you can you can burn yourself out on it and the best thing you're going to do is just take a take a break from it for a while so um i used to think all the time that if i didn't play for like a week i was going to lose all my technique and you're just a little rusty the first day but then it, and then it catches up and um but i used to put a lot of pressure on myself for not missing ever missing a day of practicing and i still do i still play every day um for for, for hours you know and mm -hmm. what's your favorite brian may solo oh my god uh Killer Queen was always my favorite, but uh, I, I think uh, Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy or Played a Game. Yeah, that's good. One. Yeah, those are all very, very lyrical, which I love. I love his, his you know, his vibrato mm -hmm. too is, is incredible. And the way that he'll just build like a guitar orchestra is so, so awesome. Yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite players. Mia says, are there any messages to Japanese fans? Any Japanese, we want to come back to your country. So Mia, get them to open it up for us. Yeah. Get us over there. Yeah, we definitely want to see we, them. We promise not to drink all the wine at the restaurant this time. All the sake. <laughs> Sean guys just says Poland. Uh, I like Poland. Yeah, Poland's cool. Um, we don't have any plans yet, but soon when the new record comes out. Soul Butcher, any suggestions for someone who doesn't have a lot of time to practice? I usually uh, cram a lot of playing into one day. Yeah, I would take, uh, okay, so I would just do, if you wanted to do like some technique stuff, I would take the, the example that we did earlier today with, uh, with the arpeggio. So down, 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 up, pull off, up, down. And, but start it really slow. I mean, that's that's really the, the big key is starting it slow. And then, you know, the other days you can do it, start to ramp up that tempo. But I would do that one, and then I would do the same exact lick that was this. Some of that stuff, or, um, you know, even just taking uh, just one of the scales that you're doing. Practicing with down and then also upstrokes. Yes. Any Michael Shanker or Uli Roth influence? Oh yeah, definitely. Both those guys. Uli too. Uli influenced all my favorites. So of mm -hmm. course there's some stuff. Killer player too. Kind of like the the godfather of neoclassical. Okay. Are you a power metal fan, Jake? Uh no, not really, man. Um I mean I like early Halloween. Yeah. Um American and, power metal. Yeah, I you know, like Symphony X and uh Queens Right. Queens right Nevermore. Nevermore, uh Iced Earth. I mean, I was a fan of those guys before working up with them. Um that that stuff I, I really like, but a, a lot of the time, uh like a lot of the major like stuff on the chorus gets not really my thing for for a, for a Mia, while, but Mia, but there's some great players in that scene though. Mia asks if we like Freedom Paul. You know, I just said I'll I'll answer that one. Like, metal is not for everyone. <laughs> Let's just say that. I I play with Freedom Call. Yeah, that they're nice tour. nice guys. I mean, they're a tight band, but like yeah, they're they're very tight. Life. It's it's not for everyone. Let's see, John, could you play some Jeff Loomis stuff for us? I'm pretty sure you like. A lot. Man, I don't even know if I if I really even know any Jeff like of his stuff. I just kind of take some of his licks and um, but I, I don't know any Nevermore songs. Like I actually literally don't know. I've never really really learned any. Um, I mean a lot of his stuff that he does, you know, is that is the kind of shit that I, I constantly steal. You know? We kind of grabbed a lot of that shit from from Ingbe, you know. I think, and um, and, and some of those patterns, you know, are just doing that. Or, like, like that's one that I use a lot that I kind of hear that I hear Loomis kind of take too, and, and that one's on Portrait. So we get it right. 
it's right before it, uh, the second verse kicks in. So a lot of that stuff, man, is like, um, I, I think like a lot of that Loomis influence comes from, because we also listen to a lot of the same guys. And, um, but yeah, I actually, I, I've never learned an Evermore song, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Listen to a lot of them. Uh, Venus, uh, where in Brazil? And then I don't understand the rest of it. <laughs> where in... Uh, Everton, can you translate uh, this comment, please, sir? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll get, we'll get to that. And um, Everton, I'm going to give you a, a video for uh, Last Car Solo when we get done because I don't want you using what I just what I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get some, get you some of the posts. All right, last questions for Mr. Dreyer. Uh, we'll probably do this once a month or so. Um, we'll, we'll pick a new topic. And, uh, yeah, for um, anything guitar related, yeah. Let's see. Does that, and it, if, she, if she's in Brazil, then that's Portuguese, right? Yeah. Make sure you pick up your Woodfall wine over at Charlie. And I Tab books, CDs, merch, all that guitar stuff. Guitar picks. Guitar picks. Last call for questions. Thanks, everyone, for coming on, hanging out. How long, how long have we been on for? An hour. Hour. And Jake, please, one of our models is here, and she wants you to kiss her. She loves you. Her name is <laughs> Ju Cole. I'm flattered. Yes. <laughs> and Sven just comments beer. Uh, Sven, buy all the beer that you can. And, and drink it and then film it like a David Hasselhoff style video of you eating a burger. Um, <laughs> and uh, Daniel, if given a signature guitar deal, would it be Ivanez or Jackson? Uh, Jackson, for sure. I love, I, I mean, I love early Ivanez's. That's what, um, the, the gems I think are some of the best, like, uh, yeah, I hate to use the word sh technical shred guitars out there. Their sound is incredible, and and I mean, Vi knocked it out of the park. Maybe you can take uh, Petrucci's that spot. Those were good guitars. Those were great guitars. Thanks a lot. Sometimes the world no longer needs a hero. Sometimes what it needs is a monster.